It's the 28th of January 2024 and if you've been having password problems with your email service and you've got an email address that ends in at live, at Hotmail or at Outlook, then you could be part of this particular problem that Microsoft are currently having. We've got all the details that we currently know on how to eradicate this problem. So stick around. All the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So, as I say, it's the 28th of January 2024 and finally Microsoft have admitted on the 26th of January that they do have a problem. Outlook and other apps are unable to connect to Outlook.com. Now it says here issue Outlook and other apps are unable to connect to Outlook.com. Some users have reported that signing in with an app password works to connect but later goes back to a disconnected state. Since starting around the 23rd of January 2024 users have reported issues connecting with Outlook 2013, Outlook 2016, Outlook for Microsoft 365, Thunderbird and mobile email apps when connecting with a pop, IMAP and exchange connections. So it says here the status is that they're currently investigating. So it says the Outlook team is investigating this issue and will update this topic as soon as we have any updates. In the meantime, please use Outlook.com on the web. So obviously, whatever's causing this problem, Microsoft are not currently sure because it's now the 28th of January. This has been going on for five days now, which is really not acceptable, especially if you use your email accounts for work or even for personal stuff, really. So the answer is at the moment for many people, like they say, they say by log on via Outlook.com. Now, some of you, for instance, if you're using Thunderbird or EM client, then we've got an alternative way of getting this working. So stick around and we'll tell you how to do that in a moment. But this option is going to work for everybody. And that is, as they say, try and log on from Outlook.com. And it's always worth trying this, first of all, if nothing else, just to check to make sure that you are using the right password. Because if you've entered in the password, if you've changed the password when it's popped up on the screen and you've put in the wrong password, then it's never going to reconnect, is it? So let's just show you what to do first of all on how to log in through outlook.com. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a web browser. It doesn't matter what web browser you use, just open one up, go to the address bar at the top of the screen, delete out anything that might be in there and then just type in there outlook.com and then press enter or return on your keyboard and then you should see a screen like this. And all you want to do is click in sign in just there. And then what it will do is it will ask for your email address. So just type that in, then click next and then just type in your password and click sign in. And then if you've typed in the correct password, then you should see a screen similar to this asking you whether or not you want to stay signed in. Now, if you're going to be using this over the next few days, then yes, I'd say click yes on this. And there you go. You should then see all your emails come up on the screen. Now, if now if you've already signed in, it didn't ask for a password. You just signed in straight away and you want to check to make sure that you've got the right password. Then the best thing to do is click on the three dots in the top right hand corner of the screen and click on new in private window. Or it could be new incognito window. Just click on that and then go again to Outlook dot com and then press enter or return. Click on sign in. And this time it should actually ask for your email address and password. You can shove that in there and check to make sure that you do have the right password. So let's just come out of these. Now, once you're sure you've got the right password, let's have a look on how you tackle this problem in Thunderbird. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel out this uh, login box here. So click on cancel and keep clicking cancel till it disappears and then go up to tools up the top there. If you haven't got tools, then click on the three horizontal lines up there and then go down to account settings. But if you have got tools, click on tools 
and go to account settings there. Then what we want to do is we want to go to server settings. So left click once on server settings and then under or beside authentication method, it'll probably say their normal password. What we want to do is we want to click on that little drop down there to get that list up there. Go down and we're looking for OAuth2. That's OAuth2. It should be at the bottom of the list. Left click once on that and then click on the cross just up there in the account settings tab. And then we want to come out of Thunderbird. So let's click on the cross in the top right hand corner, come right out of Thunderbird and then give it about 10 seconds and then go back into Thunderbird. And then what will happen is you will get this box come up on the screen that says, let this app access your info. It's OK to accept this. It may be the case that here before you get this come up, it might ask you to sign in with your regular Outlook Live or Hotmail password. If that comes up instead, then do that, then click accept. And there we go. Hopefully you should get an email from Microsoft just basically saying a new app has been connected to your Microsoft account. And that's that's fine. That is just Thunderbird just telling you that or just Microsoft telling you that Thunderbird has now been connected. Now, what about if you're using EM client, then what you're going to have to do here is go up to menu, go down to accounts and click on accounts. And then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to click add account just up there. Now, type in your email address there under automatic setup and make sure it's typed in under automatic setup and then click start and then give give your name. So uh, I'm just going to type that in. Click next here. I just say continue without encryption. So click on that. Click next. But you, you can choose one of these if you want, if you're familiar with encryption, PGP encryption. So just click next and then click finish. And here again, it's going to ask if you uh, want to give EM client access to your info at Microsoft. Now you need to do this if you want to be able to use this mail client. So move your mouse over accept. Again, if you see the login screen, then type in your live hotmail or outlook password and then you should come to this screen so click on accept and then if you see this up the top here saying this site is trying to open in client then click on open and hopefully now we should see this come up here now what we've got is we've got our old account just up here now i'd say leave that in place at the moment or if you want to check what type of account it is just click on the email address above OK, just on the left there. If it says pop somewhere up here, then I would say leave the email account on the system. But if it, if it says IMAP, then I would say with this old account highlighted there, click on remove just up there. And it says, are you sure you want to remove the account? Warning, removing this account will also locally remove all folders and items in this account tree. This will not affect the data synchronized to the server. So as it, if it is IMAP, then don't worry because you can delete it because all of the data is still stored on the server. It synchronizes with the server. If it's a pop account, if it's got pop up there, then the data is stored in your EM client and removing it at this stage will remove your emails and your folders, etc. But if it says IMAP up there, then everything should stay the same. If you're not sure, then click no or, or just come out of this. OK, and just check on the new account that's that's now appeared just to make sure that all of the information is actually there. All of your emails that you want to keep, make sure that they are there just by going into that and just clicking around a few emails, have a look at your folders and, and, and make sure that everything is in there. You'd expect to be in there. Once you're sure you're OK and you've still got your information under the new account, then click on menu, click on accounts and then click on the old account. And if you if you're not sure what one in this list is the old account and what one is the new account, then uh, just check. Click IMAP. And then if you've got a section there that says authentication, that will be the old one. The new account, if I go into it, OK, click IMAP. It doesn't have a section called authentication. 
So that's how we know what is the new account and what is the old account. So the old account has a section called authentication. So go into that one, the one that's got authentication and then click on remove and then click yes. And hopefully after a few seconds, that should disappear. Then click on save and close just up there. And there we go. You should be back in business. If unfortunately you've got Outlook as your client, this icon just down here, then I'm afraid at the moment there is no known fix for that. Outlook doesn't use, stupidly enough, the new authentication, the O auth2 it only uses old authentication hopefully microsoft will change this one day but for now the only way around it is really to go onto the web and use outlook.com i'm afraid so there you go that guide hopefully should get you back up and running if you're using any of the email clients some of them like i say outlook perhaps not the way you'd want them to get going hopefully this is something that microsoft will fix in the coming weeks let's hope it's not too long i hope you like this video and if it helped you out consider hitting that thanks button button and making a donation to this channel or have a look in the description of this video if you're in the market for a vpn a fire stick fire tv cube fire stick accessories or want to have a look through my amazon store then there's some links down there for you. Buying, subscribing and donating really does help support this channel. It helps me to be able to spend more time researching and bringing you these great videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully, whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money. And whilst you're looking through my videos, if you notice anything in there that your friends, your family or your work colleagues might find interesting, then please don't forget to share them on your social media timelines.